Okay, well, I just finished up with the chop saw cabinet, and so let's take a, a quick look at it, and then I'll answer some questions that were in the comments. Uh, first of all, we have the drawer, and I did make a divider for the drawer, and I'm using this to hold the nails for my 18-gauge 18, 18 nail gun. And I'm not sure if I'm going to make another divider for the back of the drawer, or just store full boxes of nails. I'm really, I'm kind of on the fence. I think what I may end up doing is getting a pin nailer, and if I do that, I probably will make another divider. And it's going to be really nice to have the nails right next to my chop saw where you can easily see them. You can see what nails that you're running low on. And like I had mentioned maybe in the last video, if you're using your chop saw, there's a real good chance that you're also using your nail gun. The finish on the cabinet is two coats of water-based polyurethane. I applied the polyurethane with a mohair roller and then brushed it with the grain using a foam brush. That's always what I do. I, I roll and then I brush with the grain. I'm just trying to get the material on as fast as possible. The, I do have a drawer front on the other side of the cabinet, but not a drawer handle. And the drawer handles are cherry and they're exactly like these drawer handles. This is a motif that I want to carry around the shop. It's a really easy drawer handle to make. It's just a five inch piece of cherry, uh, three, three quarter by three quarter by five inches with a seven degree angle cut on one side. And that gives you a nice little finger pull. Both sides of the cabinet have adjustable shelves and the inside depth and width of the cabinet were designed around paint cans. This cabinet can store up to 12 one-gallon paint cans. Okay, so a couple of questions. One was, why not build the cabinet with dados? Uh, well, I just feel like it's a lot easier to screw the cabinet together, and it's a shop cabinet. I'm not too concerned about seeing the plugs on the side. And in fact, I kind of like the way they look. And that brings me to another question. Why did I use epoxy to glue the plugs? this time well the I didn't countersink the holes very deep and I was concerned that the yellow glue wouldn't hold the plugs in and I also uh, wanted to I didn't want to wait for the glue to dry so I used five minute epoxy and when I epoxied the plugs into the side of the cabinet I then drilled the holes for the adjustable shelves and once I finished drilling the holes for the adjustable shelves the epoxy was dry and I was able to trim the, the plugs. And for that I used a dovetail bit in my router. And I've been doing that a lot lately and a straight bit would work also. Uh, one thing I should mention is sometimes the plug has a tendency to break off and it can break off below the surface of the plywood which is a problem because then you can't sand it without damaging the veneer. So what I've been doing is trimming the plug a little bit high. I'll trim all the plugs on uh, one side, then lower the bit a little bit and clean them up a little bit more. And that may sound like it takes a lot of time, but I still think it's less time than uh, cutting the plugs with a saw and you have less risk of damaging the veneer with the saw. Uh, so that's been working out pretty well. Have I ever thought about using SketchUp? I'd like to learn SketchUp. I really need to put some time into that. Um, but I don't see myself having a lot of time anytime soon, so we'll see. Um, so for now, if you're building any of these, you'll just have to deal with the little drawings that I have on my website. But, you know, my feeling is once you have a cut list and a, a small drawing, you're ready to start building. That's always the first step for me. It, it kind of gets me going. I get that, uh, get that little drawing done, then get the cut list, and then I can start moving forward and that's how a, a project gets started and finished. Uh, the next thing was, or the last thing was, uh, is there any kind of braking system on the casters? And these really aren't very good casters. I picked them up at the local hardware store, and in fact only one of the casters has a brake on it, and that's just because there was only one caster there with a brake. So I've got three regular casters and one with a brake. Uh, but I think it'll be good enough for now. Maybe one day I'll replace them with uh, the nice casters that you can get from some of the, the online uh, woodworking shops. But anyway, I guess that's it for now, and I'll see you on Friday.